Welcome back to another outdoor switch to Linux and today I want to do a little bit of a follow-up to a video I did about a month ago talking about too much Linux fragmentation and in that video I was talking about there's now there's so many distros because everybody and their brother decides oh it'd be cool to have a new distro and they work on a distro and they're not like super advanced. All most of them are doing is a few theme changes, a few package changes, and then calling it out a distro for, you know, their gaming distro or whatever else they want to do. And the reality is a lot of these new modern distros, they're not working super well. Now, if you're taking like Ubuntu and just adjusting a few software packages, we're not really a distro as much as we're putting some spin on something. And that's generally gonna work. But I'm seeing a lot of distros that on paper look deeply compelling to me. I want to test them out. I want to see how they go. The problem is they just don't work. And I thought I was a little light on that video. I wasn't being super aggressive because I had tested them in a virtual machine. Now, I do I think maybe is my virtual box getting old? Well, you know, I ran full system updates and that did upgrade everything to the latest versions. I tested a lot of these distros. Let's talk about the ones I'm mentioning. I'm gonna call them out by name in this one. Carbon OS, they have two versions, a KDE and a GNOME version. I tried them both. Neither one of them will boot. I think one of them got to, I think one of them actually booted. I think KDE booted but there was an error on the installer and it would try and install the whole thing into the, uh, the root partition. They had no information about how to possibly correct or fix this problem. Some people are saying on the forum, yeah, I'll just, just use the GNOME version. So I download the GNOME version. I can't get that to boot at all. Now I'm trying VirtualBox. I'm trying GNOME boxes, but now today I'm like, let's throw these on real hardware. Let's make a real ISO. Let's utilize that IC doc I have and a spare hard drive. Let's get these guys in here. I cannot get these distros to boot. To boot. Blend OS, <clears throat> I wanted to look at that when I think the latest version, I can't remember now. I mean, literally it's been over a month since I've researched these the first time to see what in the world I might want to do with it. And if I remember correctly, I think Blend OS, the latest version now supports the Wadroid out of the box. That's why I did the Wadroid video on Fedora because I knew it would work. I just had to get something installed, tweak a few things for the fact we we're in a virtual box and we were able to get Wadroid to work and it worked great. So um, I wanted to do that. And then the other one I wanted to try was I think Carbon OS. Actually, I think I have that wrong. I think Carbon OS is the one that had Wadroid. I think Blend OS also has it, but Blend OS tries to merge elements. It's gonna be like one distro to rule them all. Kind of like Vanilla OS, where Vanilla OS, it has, uh, it's, based, it's based on Ubuntu. I heard they're gonna move to Debian in the late next versions, but then what they're going to do with that is you can create a container for arch based container you can create a debian based container you can create a, a um, open susa based container all sorts of things like that and so the idea is you have this one linux distribution and inside of this one linux distribution it's getting sunny and noisy that way so inside this one linux distribution you have now the ability to run packages from any of the linux distributions based on the containerization well that sounds really cool that's what Vanilla pulled off. Blend OS is trying to pull that off a little bit different. I can't get the thing to boot on real hardware. And we're not using cutting edge stuff. We're talking about a Ryzen 5 1600. So I think what's happening is the same type of thing we see in the web design world, where this is why you need a professional web developer who knows how to test and look for different things like screen resolutions and stuff like that. Now, I remember when responsive websites were not even a thing. I'm programming sites on static containers and people are like, I want this, I want this nudged just about an inch to the left. Well, you could do that back then. Nowadays, 
You just have to make sure everything looks good and you let the responsive framework handle where things go. You're not creating a site where every little element is perfectly where you want it on the space on the screen because everybody uses different screen resolutions. There's 16 by nines, there's 16 by tens. You have 1080p's, you have 4K's, you have all sorts of different monitor and screen resolutions. A lot of your laptops are still actually, for some reason, coming with 1366. You have to adjust for all of these and mobile phones, and then the mobile phones have different screen resolutions. You have to adjust for all this, and this is why you use a mobile responsive framework. The problem is you'd hire some neighborhood kid because, oh, he's a sharp, my neighbor has a sharp kid, and I know he likes to play with computers. So he's got his little computer. He's really an amateur, doesn't really know what he's doing, but he knows enough to just to throw something up. And you sit back and go, wow, this is amazing, right? And so the problem is he hasn't tested that on a variety of things. We saw this with Microsoft laying off their entire QA team right before releasing Windows 10, and then became an abominable rollout. Well, I think what's happening is these distro developers, they're coming out here and they're throwing out, you know, it works on their system and they roll it out. Maybe they have their three best friends who all have the same or similar computer test it. It works great. They throw it out and then it's not tested anywhere else. Why else can I not get it working on a virtual machine and GNOME boxes and on real hardware? I mean, I guess I could try booting it onto an Intel processor too. I mean, I have a few of those computers laying around. I could give it a whirl, but I'm telling you, you should not have to fight with a Linux distro this hard. And this is why I came up with that idea in that other video that Linux is becoming too fragmented. It's getting to the point where there are too many distros. There's too many calling for us. They might have some compelling ideas, but their execution is so poor, it's a bad experience. And then it pollutes the field. So people wanting to switch to Linux, they're gonna get out here, they're gonna be looking around different things. They say, oh, this sounds really cool. They download this distro that barely works if you can get it to boot at all. And now they're highly frustrated that eh, Linux just doesn't work. I tried that once. Eh, it's kind of sucked. Didn't work, couldn't get to a saw. Follow all these instructions for booting a Linux distribution, didn't work. It's hurting the community at this point. And so if you're creating a distro, guys, make sure you have a very large QA team. If you can't get at least 100 different people from different walks of life spinning up your distribution, it is not worth releasing it. We're talking that's pre-release. That's alphas, betas, testings, whatever else we want to do. And so with that... I am becoming frustrated. I want to do more Linux distro reviews. I know that you guys want them because they always perform really well on the channel. But I've already looked at Ubuntu. I've already looked at Linux Mint. I've already looked at Arch. I've already looked at Endeavor. We can go back and we can do the reviews of the latest up and coming versions. And there's a hint of that that I will probably do a little bit more. But I would love to give you guys these distro reviews of these latest and greatest distros coming out. I just can't get any of them to boot. I went zero for four today. You were supposed to get a Linux distro review today. Let me give you a brief walk down. Blend OS will not boot real hardware or virtual machines. Uh, Blend OS KDE, I think that's the one I got to boot, but it installs into the boot into the, the bootloader. Uh, so it basically tries to cram the entire distro into a 500 megabyte space. Something is wrong with their system partitioner, but they don't give you any instructions about how you actually need to do it right or anything else. Um, I tried um, uh, Carbon OS, will not boot. I tried Academics. Academics actually booted. Academics installed. Uh, this is a Debian based for education. The problem is all of the keys inside of it are all dead and expired. The system won't work. I got in there the best I could. I tried to get things working, but it just would not work. I could not get the system to update. I could not get the, the packages figured out. And a lot of it was just expired keys. They had a bunch of crap in there. The um, installer did not properly miss... Um, configure settings right i'm just looking at this going this is just a mess 
So that one got thrown out. At least I could install it, show you if in theory we could get it to work. But I was looking around, there's very little documentation. Actually, there's like no documentation on that. The only good thing they have is basically Debian on Mate with um, some packages for education of different age ranges. The other one I tried was uh, Dragora. That's the only one that's not an official release. They have zero documentation about how to install it. Literally, you go to their, their um, documentation, they always tell you RTFM, right? So I went ahead to go RTFM to see how to install this thing. Under the installation, it says to do. Great. Thank you. Amazing. Amazing stuff. Just downloaded that yesterday. I boot the thing up. It boots up. It finds the installer files. You go to push the install. It's like, I can't find the installation media. Okay. Can't help you because there's no installation instructions online. No documentation. So I tried four Linux distributions today to get you out of Linux distribution. You get a walking in the woods rant video instead because all of these new finagled distros, they are not QAing. They're not testing them on a variety of hardware. They're not pushing out systems ready to be released. And like I said, Dragora is a beta. They're a beta that doesn't seem to work on a Ryzen 5 computer and they have no documentation about how to install it with a weird uh, terminal-based installer. Academics, brand new version, released not too long ago. I just downloaded it yesterday. Completely messed up. Will not install properly. Will not allow you to run system updates. Will not allow you to probably install software because of that. All the keys seem to be dead and expired. And then uh, the other two, they just wouldn't boot. Try on real hardware, try on virtual machines, try on uh, GNOME boxes, nothing. So Linux distributions, if you're running one, QA it, get it ready for testing before you push it out to the world. Don't even tell us about it until it's actually been tested on at least 100 different independent machines so that you get us information that's not fragmented because you're hurting the Linux community by doing this type of stuff. That's uh, the admonition. Mm. So uh, with that, thanks for watching this fascinating rant. Let me know your experiences. Have you gotten any of those distros to work right? When, how? <laughs> Curious to know. I, I love the concept behind some of them. I just, you know, I just can't, uh, can't get them to work on a variety of different circumstances and settings. With that, thank you for watching everybody and hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy... Switching to Linux.